playful exploration so this is a very interesting example that this child was eating coconut and he, he with one bite he looked at it and he first he told it is nandi the bull the way the horn is in two minutes he changed it and he told this is the moon the half moon the same object so so look at the flexibility in a, in, a, in a child and and look at the kind of connection that that the toy that you have in his hand is having with the real world real things so why is the child making the toy in this case it was very spontaneous so this is the activity that the child is doing all the time children are trying to make sense of the world around and there are several ways in which the child is doing you know this object that happens to be in his hand he took a bite looked at it and then he remembered two different things so what i am really stressing here is that that it is observation is the most important activity that enables learning and this is one thing that school has no space at all without observation there is no learning at all observation means not just the eyes but being aware of all the sound all the senses the sound the color movement texture smell everything everything is part of your being aware of what is around because that is the world consists of that every object is consisting of one of this you know uh, characteristics of the senses either it has smell it has color it has texture it has form something or the other and our the tools that we have are designed to to understand that to absorb it to observe to make comparisons to make connections to create relationships this is what it is doing and observation is not a choice like we have today after years of nonsensical education now we have something called experiential learning as if what we went through was non experiential learning but have you ever wondered the absurdity of a statement called experiential learning what is experiential learning <laughs> it also means that we have non experiential learning that is number 1 second is that actually can you can you have even a second without experience is it possible not to have experience so why how how was that we have created the such an absurd idea called experiential learning actually i find the modern mind is absolutely mindless because it doesn't know what it is talking about and observation is what leads to attention this is another term that we don't have in our school system you know and and attention is a natural outcome of observation you begin to pay attention to something slowly 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 you become attentive and then when you prolong this attention time you learn patience how does patience come into you uh, this is an absolutely important quality because this is all natural to children <clears throat> this is how it is so we must wonder how did boredom happen to us how did we introduce this absolutely unnatural thing called boredom into our lives so this is a, a child the child is selling balloons she had seen balloon seller in the market so he came back and started creating this so so i will just show you several such examples of what actually children do when they are not bombarded with your toys how do children explore the world around by making things you know and the same object having different different meanings depending upon the situation in this case it's the arakan sheet which when it was cut it curled around and the child started looking through it 
so she was not inventing anything she picked up something that she can look through and this act was very authentic act because she has never seen a binocular so the object was inviting the way the sofa was inviting the child to bounce this object was inviting the child to look through <clears throat> And of course, imagination is a completely misunderstood idea of modernity because you see what modernity lacks is experience, a concrete experience of things. Imagination is on experience, something that you think that is concrete, that is what you imagine about. that uh, uh, without which that we are talking about uh, uh, you know we are talking about uh, uh, imagination and of course this is now connected with storytelling and so many new dramas that we have invented but otherwise actually if you look into what is imagination we have with children this is a completely different kind of scenario and and of course uh, and all, all these are automatic. It's not that these are conscious processes. I'm actually talking about all this just to say that these, all these activities are happening within the system. It's not something that you can see. You know, of course, you can. You will be able to notice it if you are really paying attention. Like the way the child was connecting that coconut, the bite to a nandi, and and moon, the comparison is being made. So you can always see that the child is doing this, some kind of comparison, and then some kind of categorization. This is very, very natural. Now, this is interesting that she had actually, uh, you know, this was lying on the table. So she put it up like this and then say, husband and wife, mother and child, mother and husband, um, mother and father. And then he, he, she laid it down and said, now they are sleeping. So what is the connection between father and mother in these two forms? This is what is to be understood. You know? So either when they are making comparisons, they are making some kind of comparison in life. Usually the father and mother, the size difference, you know, the, the father is normally taller and the, you know, so that is the kind of thing that the child was comparing. So, so it, will be, it is very interesting to see what is the kind of shift, what is the kind of comparison the child is making. Now here, you know, and, and they are very, very contemporary. The moment they see something the parents are doing, immediately they pick it up. Now it's a selfie that they are doing, you know. And what, what, are, what do they have? You know. So actually, none of this is permanent. This is what one must understand. Just by looking at this, don't make a selfie stick for the child. The child is not looking for a selfie stick. This is what modernity is misunderstood that children are looking for products because this was a greeting card. So it doesn't even take a second for them to create these kind of things. You know? So abstraction is another very, very important thing that one must be understood. That abstraction is a natural process that children do. And, and it is about underlying principles, similarities, creating categories. And, and this is what the child is doing all the time. And abstraction uh, is something that is natural to us. But you know, you can see the, see the impact of an artificial abstraction teaching that has happened within us. We have actually lost the ability to actually understand, learn the world and you know, the, the natural process of abstraction, everything is gone from us because we have been taken away from this natural way of understanding and put into a very artificially created space. So here, the child has actually picked up this, uh, you know, thing. Uh, this is an umbrella frame. This is an umbrella frame, which the child has um, used as at, at JCB. So he has compared completely two kinds of, so he has actually observed how does the JCB move? How does it, how does it, you know, lift mud and, and shift, you know? So he just took this uh, uh, 
umbrella frame and recreated a JCB for him. So every activity that the child is doing has an element of abstraction. So it's actually a one, so I'm actually taking, child is constantly creating and imagining. There's no way adult can, you know, live up to this. So the only thing we can do is to leave them alone. That's all. Don't help. Just create space and leave them alone and learn what they are doing. Observe what they are doing. Then another, you know, one major, major uh, damage that modern toys are doing is to actually create gender division. But if you actually go into a rural tribal area, there is not one thing that is gender specific. Till about 7, 8, 12 years, and not absolutely a wrong understanding that modern people are promoting. Because see, when you begin to promote, right from childhood, when you promote that, then there is no way to find out if there is anything else, you know. So all the research that is happening in the modern system is that, that first you create gender division, then you prove that there is a gender division in the child. So first you create interest in the child to like bright colors and then you prove that they like bright colors. Simple. It's a very simple way. Because see why there is this, this question needs to be addressed more deeper. Why this whole issue of gender division? See, we are Ardhanari Shura. We are born as both male and female principle. And if we don't artificially create gender division, we will retain the quality of both within us. But in the modern context, it's a very, very male oriented context that we have created. Very rational, very methodical, afraid of senses, afraid of body. So naturally what we have is a very, very male that, you know, uh, oriented society. In this case, both male and female, both are masculine in that sense. So this masculine quality is being promoted right from childhood by creating a gender division. Otherwise, both the boys and the girls, they have both the male and female principle at work together. And if you don't disturb it, then the child retains its, these two qualities. These are qualities of being. Your intuition, your sensitivity, your kindness, your you know, empathy, all that belongs to your fem fem you know, I think, to the feminine side. We don't have it right now because that is what we systematically kill. Where does, where does our intuition work? Where, why are our senses not functioning? So this gender division is something that, that modernity does. And uh, I think it's very important that within our modern context, we systematically keep away from this kind of, uh, you know, this kind of things. So this was a good example of a child ch trying to, you know, uh, the child trying to, uh, you know, wear, uh, dress like a girl. Instilling care. So I'm actually looking at various aspects that you see in the day-to-day -day life of a, uh, you know, non-toy oriented society in which people use every day-to-day -day things that are there in, 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 in life, you know. So in this case, that the child is actually, you know, washing. He, she's hardly one and a half, two years. Uh, she is now using a terracotta pot and cleaning it, you know. So, so how do we actually become careful? How does care get instilled in us? Would we get it if we are all the time using plastic things? Or do we get it when we use things that demand care from us? 